spin. What's going on, Alex? All right, well then this segment is for you, John. Thank you. Nordstrom's flagship New York City store is opening its doors for shoppers in Midtown, and it's going to offer everything from express tailoring to Botox. So the store also features seven upscale restaurants and bars as well. The Seattle-based retailer says this will be the largest store to open in Manhattan in more than 50 years. It occupies the first seven floors of the tallest residential tower in the Western Hemisphere. It's going to take up 320,000 square feet, but the retail industry has never been more volatile. Nordstrom will face fear competition from other well-established luxury retailers and online shopping giants as well. So how will Nordstrom fit into this marketplace? Joining us now to discuss the big move is Dan Geiger, a senior reporter with Crane's New York Business. Dan, you know all about shopping as it pertains <laughs> to the retail industry here in New York. But on a more serious note, does New York City really need another big giant retailer to come in? Well, Alex, that's the question. Uh, there's been a lot of big retail added to the market in recent years. Is clearly Hudson Yards, right? Mm -hmm. A million square feet that just opened a few months back. You've got the mall downtown. And think about it, we're adding hundreds of thousands of square feet, more, over a million square feet of mm -hmm. retail at a time when retail is kind of being retrenched and kind of retreating, right? You got Amazon surging, Amazon's taking more and more space. I've written about that. They're looking to move into New York City more and more. Online retail seems to be gaining more and more steam. Uh, it's interesting because I was at the World Trade Center Mall just yesterday and I was walking around and it's a beautiful space. It's downtown at the World Trade Center and uh, there's a lot of empty stores there, right? There's a lot of space that they haven't leased. So you look at that and you say, gosh, the demand really is down. You see it. Do you think it's counterintuitive to open 320,000 square feet, or do you feel like it's a smart model that they're offering other things, like this Botox and restaurants? It's almost become an experience where you can get more than one thing done in your life altogether. Absolutely. I mean, that's what retail is all about these days. It's uh -huh. experiential retail, right? You go to the Gap, and, and you see they have a whole counter there where they'll do custom embroidery for you, right? You'll, you'll say, hey, I want my name stitched on something. So every retailer is looking for that thing. Is this a gimmick? Is it going to actually work? It kind of remains to be seen. I think that it is no question uh, what you're suggesting is, is definitely true. It's a huge bet right now to open a 300,000 square foot store. And remember, this was a deal that was cast seven years ago before all these problems were happening, right? That's how long it takes to get up and running with a huge kind of a flagship in New York City. So this is, in, in a lot of ways, it's a legacy project. Let's see how it works out. Okay, so, you know, just looking back in the history recently specifically, we're talking I iconic Newark brands like Lord & Taylor, Saks Fifth Avenue, Barney's is now also struggling. Um, we've seen Lord & Taylor locations close, Saks Fifth Avenue the same. Absolutely. Are they facing Nordstrom an uphill battle? They absolutely are. I mean, what, what's the incentive to go into a store, right? Saks, they just closed their, their outlet down at, at Brookfield Place mm -hmm. downtown. Barney's, you mentioned bankruptcy. Uh, each store does have its own certain set of circumstances. Barney's was getting crushed by tremendous rent that they were paying. They, they had to declare bankruptcy. But still, these businesses are flagging, right? Because why do you, again, why do you need to go to a store? You can get it online. You can get it shipped to you in a day. Almost everybody's offering a really compelling online package now, including Nordstrom, by the way. Right. Um, and so, so what is the thing that's going to bring into the store? I think Nordstrom's trying to create that. As yeah. you mentioned, the, the Botox and the other things. <laughs> right. Is that going to really get, is that going to energize shoppers? Is that going to get people to come out and, and really want to come to the store and see it? Yeah. Is it going to be enough to make the whole thing mm -hmm. profitable? We'll, we'll have to see. So we talk about it taking seven years. Is this a deal that they could have pulled out of and thought like, ooh, let me rethink this. And also I want to know about the location, their choice on Billionaire's Row. Those kind of coupled together. What's your, what's your opinion? Uh, could they have pulled out? Anybody can certainly pull the plug. They've invested a huge amount in this, so I don't think that that's something they had seriously wanted to do. They were for years wanting to get into New York City. Nordstrom, for 20 years, people had been talking and murmuring about them. Hey, they want to open a store. So when they did this, this was a huge step for them, remember? This was like, hey, they finally found what they wanted. They did something smart. They bought the space. They own that space. Hmm. So. If the worst thing happened and they said, hey, we can't cut it here, they could always sell that space and probably make a lot of money. Um, 
you know, I do think, though, that, uh, you know, they can be successful under certain circumstances. I, I, I do think that they have done things to create what they call omni-channel, which is where you, you know, you can shop in the stores, you can shop online. They kind of put that together pretty well. They have great brands. Nordstrom does a lot of good stuff. But again, I've, I've walked by. They've, they've been open right next to that store uh, w with, a, with a, a men's store on, on, in Columbus Circle. And you look and you walk by there and you can go there almost any night and you see there's not a ton of shoppers in there. And it's sort of a tough thing to watch because it's a great store and there's not a lot of people in there. That, that is a little bit of kind of presaging, a little bit of a harbinger for something a little concerning. Right. Billionaire's Row, that's always been 57th Street. It's always been a little bit of a strange shopping corridor, right? It's like Fifth Avenue goes there. You've got Columbus Circle. They're shopping there. you got Fifth Avenue nearby. Obviously, people still shop there. you got Madison Avenue. you got the Apple Store on the other end. But do people kind of walk down that corridor and shop? Traditionally, no. Mm -hmm. They actually don't really. That hasn't been like a prime shopping corridor. So they're up against a few different things here. You know, that hasn't always been the best location. They're pretty close to Columbus Circle, which has really come a long way in the last, you know, 10 or 15 years with Time Warner Center. Um, I do think that being on Billionaire's Row, you would kind of think, hey, is there an exclusivity to this? I mean, these are literally towers mm -hmm. where people bought, and they're like in New York City for one day a year, yeah. right? That's what we're yeah. talking about here. These are pied de terre. So, does it being on Billionaires Road does it mean anything? You know, I want to say, hey, does that that would add some kind of like a luxurious element, but. Not really. Mm -hmm. And just quickly, I'm really interested to hear what you think about rents in the area because of Nordstrom coming in. Do you think anything will be affected? I, you know, that's a, it's a great question, and you never know because landlords are always looking for something to say. Hey, like right. Nordstrom's hey, right next yeah. door. You got to pay me. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't I think that. I guess wait, we'll wait and see. Uh, yeah, but I don't think so okay. because, I mean, look at the vacancy. There's so mm -hmm. much vacancy, and, and, and right near Columbus Circle. Like, just go south, and you see a lot of vacant stores. All right. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate great your insight always. Here, Thank you. Coming up, we'll run down.